the average senior is on four medications and some on as many as 20 medications and it's common to be on pills for insomnia and anxiety and allergies among other things but these medications affect memory and concentration and 18 percent of people in this age group complain of memory problems and cognitive deficits so do you think that this is a coincidence or do you think that there's a link? <laughs> well, it's a, definitely an association that's, it, uh, that's powerful. We know because previous studies have been done looking at a lot of the medications that affect cognition and memory, and they show a dramatic uh, correlation. A study out of the University of Montreal was done in October of 2012 showing that these common drugs do cause these changes, and what they do is they bind to some of the receptor sites in the brain where neurotransmitters work things like the cholinergic uh, receptor sites and the histamine and GABA and opioid brain receptors are all involved with it. They looked at 68 trials, clinical trials on benzodiazepines. Those are drugs like... Uh, Valium val and Librium? Yeah, and, and others in that family, like Ativan, uh, and they showed that it impaired memory and concentration as well. Well, they make you tired and sleepy, too. Well, they, they do a lot of things that more than just relax you. It's always at the price of a lot of other side effects, although for some people, that's the only solution that works. They also looked at 12 tests or clinical trials on antihistamines and 15 on tricyclic antidepressants. And what they found was, again, that there were deficits in attention and in, 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 in processing information. Well, what's a tricyclic antidepressant? Recently, we were talking about SSRI antidepressants. <laughs> well, these are drugs that work by increasing <laughs> serotonin levels and levels of norepinephrine. And these are neurotransmitters that are very important. Well, can you think of an example of any? Of, of any what? Tricyclic antidepressant? Oh, there, there are a number of them. Elevil and Pamelor and Sinequan. Uh, Tofranil is another one, Vivactyl. Uh, these are not real commonly used ones anymore because we're, we're tending to have a little fad on SSRI antidepressants these days. Uh, so there is a powerful effect here. and We know from previous studies that the anticholinergic effect, which I mentioned earlier, the anticholinergic uh, effect is huge because acetylcholine is one of the most important neurotransmitters in the brain and in people who have Alzheimer's disease this is the, the place where uh, they're, they're deficient. So it makes it worse. Yeah, it blocks them. It, it's right. So there's not so many of them. So what would be an example of an anticholinergic drug so that people could Oh, there see are if there are so those. many of them that, that, uh, that, that are around. There are antihistamines or like some of these other drugs we're mentioning here. Uh, some of the ones that help you, know, you urinate, uh, the antihistamines. Uh, there's uh, things like uh, Paxil even, you know, the SSRI antidepressants. Uh, and what we get is a cumulative anticholinergic effect it's, it, that, that limits our ability to think and our ability to, to remember things. Well, this study recommends that seniors not be on these tri, um, cyclic. cyclic antidepressants or the first generation uh, antihistamine. Mm -hmm. So what's a first generation antihistamine? What does that mean? Is there those second are, generation, third generation? Yeah, there, or, is, there are all those things. Is that from your grandmother or your... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah, actually, that's true. I mean, things like Benadryl and Chlortrimeton and Phenergan and, and Atarax are all examples of the original antihistamines that, that came out. But they make you so sleepy that in the hospital, there, there have been lots of studies showing that they're contraindicated uh, to be used for sleep because the problem is, is people, they get up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom, they're not all there. And then they have this problem with their balance and they fall and they fracture hips and, mm. they, and it goes on from there. Exactly. And a lot of them seem like they're confused and maybe they really are confused from the drugs. First thing I do, Vicki, when somebody comes into the hospital is I make sure that I take them off their medications. It's not unusual for someone who is in a nursing home to come in on 15 or 20 or more drugs that all have uh, interactions. That Nobody's are, done those studies for those interactions. That's really right. And so if I just take them off and I watch them carefully, and so many of them just wake up, and some of them actually don't go back to the convalescent hospital, they go home because these drugs really suppress mentation. And uh, it's to, really something, too. You know, they put somebody on one medication, and then they have some side effects, and then they put them on another medication for the side effects from the other, and so it goes. And many times these people are, end up being restrained and everything, and it's because they're having reactions to the medications. Well, see, America's over-medicated. 
we have too many drugs that we use as a first resort. We, we should be using our common sense to try and solve problems using lifestyle medicine. Well, if you can't sleep there, you know, when you're elderly, there are some safer things that you can do besides medi meditation. Everybody always talks about meditation, but mm -hmm. there are essential oils that help mm -hmm. you to sleep. Things like lavender and, and uh, lemon, lemon, balm. For, lemon balm and things like that. And not drinking caffeine in the afternoon and mm -hmm. not, not overdoing the nap. Yeah, Have you right. ever noticed that a lot of the elderly spend a lot of the day sleeping well, and then bored. they're awake all night? The yeah, that happens. They call it the sundowner syndrome. <laughs> we saw that. I saw, When I was practicing in the hospital, I saw that all the time. So, and then what about allergies? Is there something that these people can do for allergies that wouldn't The first thing is to avoid the things that are causing the allergies, and, and that's because your immune system isn't up to par. So we use things like stinging nettle, and sometimes we'll use some of the liver support uh, drugs. That Quercetin, are, is that Quercetin is one for, it could be used for allergies for sure, particularly of the GI tract, because what it does is it blocks the receptor sites that release histamine, which is what causes the allergic reaction to have its symptoms. So that's a that's a great thing to do. Another thing too is, and what about the depression then? Because the, these antidepressant drugs, the tricyclics, are causing. Well, I think the first thing problems. to do is to measure their vitamin D level, because so many of these people are in the hospital; they never get out in the sunlight. And sun UVB rays are what you need to be able to make vitamin D, and it doesn't go through glass. So these people that are confined inside, if they're not taking fair amounts of vitamin D, like three or four thousand units a day or more, uh, they're simply going to be deficient in it. And uh, mental deterioration is one of the first things we see with it. And, and, and uh, probiotics and getting them to do some kind of exercise. Exercise, social interaction, avoiding drugs, using lifestyle, keeping people mentally sharp and physically uh, in, in shape are the things that are the most important. So drugs almost all can have an effect on memory and cognition. We should use them only when they're necessary and rely on the natural things uh, and keeping people socially and physically active if we want to see our seniors living lives that have value to them.